Welcome to Forbidden Planet TV. I'm Andrew Sumner. And I'm here joined by the creators of Titan Comics, all new Cowboy Bebop comic book, artist Lamar Matherin, and author Dan Waters. How are you, gents? Really great. Really happy to be here. It's great to see you both. You are here, of course, to talk about my friends at Titan Comics, all new Cowboy Bebop uh, comic book, which is tying into the new Netflix series, which has just debuted. So, so guys, if we could take a step back, could you tell me how you both got involved with the project? Um, I feel like Andrew should say his part first, since he's the one that probably helped find me. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, I mean, I was, I was approached, um, and I was asked, I was, I was asked just out the gate, like, you know, have you ever seen Cowboy Bebop? Do you like Cowboy Bebop? And I was like, yeah. It, it, you know, yes, please. It is. It is just one of the best. The, the original anime is one of the best written things I think in any medium. Um, so as a writer, it was. It it almost gave me pause because it was, it was one of those things of Are you going to um, contribute something to this? Are you going to um, be able to like hold up those standards? And it's like, yeah, of course. And then an idea appears, and and it all sort of goes from there. Um, and Lamar, I found I I. I put it forward for the project who I, we, we didn't know each other before that, but I've been following on, on Instagram for a while before. Um, I was talking to a couple of like other artist friends as well. Um, uh, Casper Wingard, who's my, my co-conspirator on a whole load of books. And he was like, oh man, this, he, uh, as soon as I mentioned Cowboy Eagle, he was like, oh man, this guy is the, is the perfect, uh, perfect person for that. And I, I totally agreed. So luckily we were able to bring him on board. Wow. Excellent. So that, and, that, that so, wraps up my part too, because I have no <laughs> idea how they found me personally. I, I'm just kind of getting word of how they found me within the context of this conversation. I think he's mentioned Casper before, and so I think I have some idea of how that happened. Mm -hmm. But I don't, yeah, it's a mystery to me how I, because out of the millions of artists online that I, people can find, I'm, I'm still some kind of shell shocked by that idea. Um, that someone found oh, me I think I think the works the work uh, speaks for itself as well. The pages speak for themselves. Right on, mate. I mean, absolutely right. You know that that's exactly the key. I mean, I think both of you are producing beautiful work on this book. And um, what can you tell me about what we can expect from this first arc from Cowboy Bebop? Oh boy. Um, Every everything everything from Bebop and, and hopefully a few surprises along the way because what would it you know how would it be Bebop without doing something kind of weird and, and trying something new? Um, my my sort of thought going into the process was there's the there's the anime which is beloved and there's the the new Netflix series which is um, quickly becoming beloved but but no one had seen it at the time we were beginning this process so working in a in a also in a in a drawn medium like the like the anime, but being tied to the specifically to the Netflix show, I I kind of figured what what our role would be would be to sort of bridge the gap between those two incarnations and show how a story that's in, intrinsically sort of cowboy bebop would sort of work either way. Yeah, I um, I'm a huge fan of I mean of the original. Uh, source material I pretty much watched it pretty much every year or sometimes twice a year in my downtime or when I was sketching stuff out so I'm pretty attached to the tone and the atmosphere I'm very familiar with the atmosphere and so my my um, my goal in drawing seeing how it's connected to the live action adaption was to figure out how to capture the actors and the designs of those characters while still keeping the tone of the source material they're basing it off. So I had like a hybrid is what I'm trying to attempt of the 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 noir feel of, of the, the original with the the new production of what's coming out. And then sort of reading within the lines of uh, the story and where I can pick, put those things together as best as possible, because it is a collaborative uh, a, a, a medium and it's a collaborative project doing a comic. And so working with Dan Waters and 
Am I saying that right? Waters? Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I'm not going to say your last name out loud, but trying to figure out how to, to, you know, I'm basically the glue here is what I'm, as I, I, I've been describing my, my part in this. Um, as far as my skill set allows me to do those things, then I'll do those things. I think I have to say that <clears throat> I would, I would, my, my comment at this point for everybody watching this and everybody who had to check this book out is these two, these two guys have been, uh, have been very, very humble in the self delivery of what they're delivering on the book. Cause what they're delivering on the book is truly special. And I think both from a script and art perspective, you guys are, are, are blown me away in terms of what I thought you might be doing in terms of, adapting the show and, and i think you're right lamar the great thing about the original cowboy bebop is it's a beautiful artifact right and it's finite as well you know it's a it's a nice you can get hold of it and you can watch it the beginning the middle and the end yeah. um but i think you can see that you guys have got that genuine love for the for, for the piece and for for this for this landscape so what can what more can you tell me about the landscape of of this cowboy bebop world as created by yourselves? Um, definitely wanted to take it uh, to some places. Like 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 I sort of said, I, I, it wouldn't feel like Bebop if we didn't try and do something like new with it and something weird with it. So we're going to some uh, some places in the galaxy that, that haven't been uh, explored before, uh, taking our crew out there, getting them into, into all sorts of trouble. Um, yeah, like uh, str strange places, strange places that haven't, uh, where the ISSP haven't haven't managed to get to yet, um, yeah. Like there's there's all of these sort of tones that that the shows both shows now uh, carry, um, and I, I kind of wanted to hit all of those beats as much as we could. Hit the hit the comedy beats, hit the western beats, hit the noir beats, um, hit the the you know, Jeet Kune Do beats. So lots of explosions, lots of uh, jet planes racing each other, all sorts of things. How about yeah. yourself, Lamar? Um, so I I don't have much of uh, I I don't have much I I need to actually check out the new show now, but I don't have any time as of right now. Uh, so I have I, I I'm also afraid to watch it because I feel like I'm going to start making decisions I wasn't planning on making before. So I should probably hold off for now and let it be a surprise to me too. Um, but I, I'm trying my best to take the elements that, like, my love for, for Cowboy Bebop as much as I can within the, the world that Dan's writing, um, and it's, it's just a matter of, um, trying to deliver on tonality. That's my whole goal here, is to control the tonality of something. Because I'm, because I so far I, I I'm loving the story. Um, it does feel like a Cowboy Bebop story, um, given what I know about it. But a lot of the the things I about the story are also I'm not aware of. I'm just kind of looking at what I have in front of me and going with that. And, as, and every time I look at what I have in front of me, it feels about Cowboy Bebop. So um, I think people will enjoy. Well, I'm, my hope is people will enjoy that. So, um, yeah, I forgot yeah. The, the main point of the, where I was going with that, but. Where you went and was very impressive nonetheless, mate. Uh, and uh, I got another question for you both, which is uh, uh, given your his respective history of Cowboy Bebop, Cowboy Bebop, who are the characters that, uh, that Dan, that you most enjoy writing? Uh, I and mean, I'm not gonna lie, it's, it's probably Iron. Um, although what I will say is, is we're bringing in a, a a new villain who's not uh, who's not been seen for, and he's been uh, had a lot of fun. We sort of looked at the real sort of like classic like like Bebop villains and and built one from the ground up, and that's been a real blast. And having him interact with the characters that that we all know so well, and yeah, you know, we all enjoyed watching um that yeah that's that's been a real highlight brilliant uh, and lamar do you have a particular character that you you, you enjoy illustrating the most 
Uh, I do like the, so far, what I do is the villain so far. I do think if it's too early to say, I think from what I'm getting from this character, he almost feels as cool as Spike Spiegel. Yeah. <laughs> That's the go. <goal. laughs> I think he's, I think Dan's trying to give that character a run for his money. I don't know. <laughs> I don't, I don't know if he's going to, if he's going to turn the world upside down or not, but. Hey, we got I, four issues. I just, <laughs> I, I, cre- I, come, I came up with the design for the character based on what I was reading. So I, I tried to, it was, what's the word you used? Squat, squash buckling? What was the word you used? Squash buckling, yeah. Squash buckling. <laughs> yeah. That's kind of the, the, the kind of the tone and the colors I went with, how I was going to go with the character. So I, yeah, I mean, there's a, there's a lot of, of, of reminiscence of, a Spike Spiegel, but it's not a Spike Spiegel. It's so it's, it. It seems like a character that Spike Spiegel would have been, maybe. <laughs> he was living a different life, but it's, that's it's a good way to put it. I think, guys, what do you, what do you both think has made Cowboy Bebop such a, a long lasting, um, such a long lasting narrative, such a long lasting property? Because I, the analogy that it creates is it's like the original series of Star Trek, right? It's a finite thing. It's a finite cultural artifact from a specific period of time, but it's lived on and on and on beyond that original iteration. So why do you think it's so resonant today? I mean, it is it is a cultural artifact of a, of a specific time, but it's also, I think, quite pointedly timeless in that it's set in a certain time period and yet draws from from all of these earlier, you know, it, it's, a, it's a 90s show, but it doesn't look 90s. It's got all of this sort of um, 1950s sort of like like cars and, and, and architecture and all this kind of stuff going on, but on Mars. Uh, and, and, you know, that that's one thing is that is that I think you can still watch it now and it feels pretty timeless, but I, I genuinely think the thing that's made Cowboy Bebop what it is, is, is just the, 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 level of quality of of everything that went into it the um the the art is immaculate the the writing is just i think it has uh one of the best opening episodes and one of the best final episodes of any anything uh on tv yeah to add to that i would say all those things are very much true i also think um unlike other properties like star wars and i don't it's it's very Cowboy Bebop doesn't have a lot of material that's made, you know, ongoing like a Star Wars has. So it's kind of surprising how far it's gone being lasting as long as those, you know, the big ones that are up there. I would say Cowboy Bebop has a lot to do with how it unravels as you keep getting older. Um, Just because the anime, and it, and it, because where you were when you saw it had a big impact on what you got from it. And so... Um, I know as I saw it when I was probably, what, 13, when I first saw it, 14. And so every time as I've gotten older, things, the characters make more and more sense to me. And um, to add on to what Dan uh, said, like best, you know, best music, best, best, most heartfelt ending of any anime I've ever probably seen. Um, And it pulls at your heartstrings to a certain degree. Um, and I think every time you watch it, you resonate with a different character because I feel like everyone resonated with Spike Spiegel when they were young. And then after I, after a while, you resonate with Faye and then you're like, now I'm, I'm in the stage of my jet, really. <laughs> you know, it's kind of, yeah, because it, it kind of made you, you kind of like, after you do it like, you kind of see jet side over life. And it's, oh, yeah. <laughs> You're like, man, why are people so crabby? Why, like, it's just, just tired. Like, hey. <laughs> and so, yeah, it just it's a timeless. They have timeless characters, and the archetypes seem very real. And it's like it's not only that you've seen those people, but you've been those people at some point in your life. So, that is very well said, Lamar. I think that's absolutely spot on, <clears throat> and that's a great point to close out on. I think so. It's been my pleasure to be chatting with Lamar Matherin and Dan Waters about the new ongoing Cowboy Bebop comic from Titan Comics. And we've been specifically talking about issue one, which everybody watching this can buy from the links attached to this conversation. Great to see you guys. And I can't wait to see 
what you do on an ongoing basis with this property. But you've made such a brilliant start. It's been fantastic reading issue one. I urge everybody watching this to check it out. It's a great read. Oh, thanks very much, Andrew. It's been a pleasure. Yeah, take care, take care. gents. All the very Cheers. best. I'll see you soon. Bye. Bye -bye. Take care. Bye-bye. If you're enjoying watching Forbidden Planet TV and you're enjoying watching us talk to the world's most interesting and accomplished filmmakers, authors, artists, musicians, creators, subscribe right here. See you soon.